vloggers, gloggers, and everyday brewers, it's time for another episode of Toilet Vlog Brewing. Well, the second part of an episode about our beer. So, a lot of stuff has happened since I uploaded that last video. Uh, I literally recorded everything. Um, what I'm going to do is that, like I, like I said, I'm so used to this, getting used to this new editing thing. I'm going to kind of like splice all the videos into one big thing. And then I'll just voice over the audio for it. Uh, some of the videos are a little fast. I mean, they're only like four or five seconds long. But um, it will show you everything, literally from the start all the way to the re-racking, which you don't technically have to do. I did anyways. But I kind of might have did a little early because, uh, what do you call it? Um, man, I just had a massive brain for it. I, uh, I'm so used to doing wine and stuff like that, so... Because it came out at the end. Because remember, it was 1.047. Excuse me. And uh, at the end, it was uh, 1.010. So I'm going to get on my AVB calculator. Now, if you ever want to test the uh, you know, the strength of your alcohol, you, all you have to do is just, um, or your beer, or your distillate, or whatever. Well, distillate's completely different. But um, your beer or your wine... Just, uh, just go to Google, type in ABV calculator. It's literally the first one to pop up by brewsfriends.com. And let's see here. It's got like a thing where it will, you know. Oh, you can't see shit. Yeah. But either way, uh, let's see here. So our original gravity was 1.047. And we got it down to 1.10. So that means it's going to be 4.86%. So it is a brown ale. So, and with brown ales, it's supposed to be low carbonation, and they're not supposed to be really boozy and stuff like that. Like, you know, just like I said, it was a Northern English brown ale. If you do want to make something that's, you know, like way up there and stuff like that, you know, there's tons of recipes out there to look and stuff. I mean, you don't really want to just add sugar to something like that to like crank up the ABB because that's really not how that works when it comes to beer. You're looking for, you know for your yeast to be settled with, you know, the nutrients from the grain and the stuff they've already got in there and stuff. So yeah, see you on the rest of the video. Okay, so here we have me filling up my Grainfather T500. You can see where that's a mark for the uh, five gallon. And it does take a little while to fill up. So it took about 15 minutes all together to fill it all the way up to the five gallon mark and then I put a lid over it so you know it will retain the heat and boil faster like I said it's just a one switch system and then I've got my digital thermometer I got it set to go to 160 so a little alarm will go off when it gets to 160 and that's when we'll get ready to our steep our grains you can see it getting up to temperature very hot to the touch still getting up there almost there so it's it is at the 155 mark so once you take the lid off you'll have a lot of steam and then we'll get our sanitized brew in the bag ready to go just submerge that right into the water. Make sure you don't burn yourself. Now the T500 has uh, these little latches on the side where you usually put your uh, the top of your uh, reducer at. But you can use these to kind of click your bag on. And then here's the grains. Just dump them right in. Now remember your water temperature is going to go down, so you're going to want to start at a higher temperature. And then we'll get our paddle, stick that in, get everything a nice good working. You want to get deep down in there, make sure you don't have any, uh, any dough balls, which are when the grains stick together and create dry pockets. You want to make sure everything's broken up. See, now at this point I realized I could just pull this tie because the bag kept floating up on me and couldn't 
get it to latch. <laughs> when you give that a good work around, make sure all your grains are completely saturated and ready for your steep. So you're going to want to put your lid back on so you can keep it at your original 155. So what I do to maintain the uh, current temperature without, because you'll turn your T500 off, and then what I do is that I wrap it in a blanket, keep it nice and insulated. You can use coats, whatever you want. And then I can uh, pull the uh, digital thermometer over here and put it on top and start a timer for our 20 minutes steep. See how it stays at about 156, 154. You can go down or up one temperature, that's fine, but make sure your fermenter, or not fermenter, make sure it's completely covered. See, it's been probably over 20 minutes or probably about 15 minutes now and we're still at 154. So we've reached the 20 minute mark and then what we'll do is that we'll take the blanket off and open her up and pull out the grains. Now this is going to be very hot, so make sure you uh, use some gloves or some kind of prote <laughs> protection. I know I didn't to begin with. See here, I'm taking off the latches and getting everything pulled up. What some people like to do is that they actually like to get like a, uh, a cookie cooling rack and set that right over it the T500 and then after that like kind of like squeeze the grains down that way I don't have one so you can see I already flicked the T500 back on because we're gonna get everything up put back up to a boil you're gonna want to get all that juice out Don't feel bad to squeeze. I know there's a lot of rumors about squeezing the bag unreleases tannins, like I said in my first video, but you can get so much more of it out of the bag just by giving it a gentle squeeze. And like I said, use some gloves. I didn't hear and my hands were on fire. <laughs> Just a reminder to uh, wash your hands throughout your brewing process. You don't want to get any buggies in there. You can even spray your hands down with Starzan and laugh at myself while I keep burning myself. All right, slowly but surely, this is going to come up to a boil. See, it went down a little bit when we took the grains out and everything, but mm. 
Just remember to re-sanitize everything. Here I am spraying down the paddle with Starzan again. And at this point, it had gotten to a boil. And I'm about ready to add the uh, DME and the hops. So there it is, up to a full boil now. So I'm about ready to add the uh, first hop edition. I don't remember if I uh, previously had it on earlier, but after I put in the DME, Nope. Well, maybe this is the part. Okay, it's up to a boil. Oh, and I dropped the bag. And, and after adding the DME, it made the uh, temperature fall a little bit. But all I did was uh, put the lid back on and bring it up to, uh, to a boil again before adding the first hop addition and putting in another brew in the bag to use as a hop spider. Just give it a stir. Make sure you don't have any chunks stick together. Just like your grain, the DME can also stick together. Now, DME will make it kind of like froth up, but just keep working it, and it will help bring down the bubbles. Because it may seem like it's going to overflow, but you'll be fine. Just keep working it. Adding in the second bag. The bags were split. There was one five pound bag and one two pound bag. So I'm adding in the uh, secondary bag right here. Making sure everything's getting nice and worked in. So yeah, here I am showing off the brew bag and the hops that we're going to be adding in. You can usually use a hop spider, but like I said, we're just going to be using a brew in the bag. Put your lid back on. Wait for that to come up to a boil all over again. See, it boiled over just a little bit, but that's fine. But once it comes up to a good roll boil, you don't really have to worry. And you don't have to worry about any kind of bubbling once you put in the brew bag, because it will kind of stop it from all going all over the place. Get it in there the best you can. I know with a roll bowl going on you might have to push down with um, 
your paddle or something, but you'll get it in there. Yeah, it's very steamy. My glasses kept fogging up, but it definitely does smell good. for an hour boil and our first hop addition will go in once I get this bag in and that will be for a one hour boil and then at the last 10 minutes we'll be adding the secondary hop so basically what you can do is set a timer for 50 minutes and then once that last timer goes off or that timer goes off I mean you can dump in your secondary hop addition so here I go dumping in the fugal hops I definitely thought they were called frugal. You can see there's little hot pellets in here. And you just dump them right in. They literally just disintegrate right when you put them in. But that brew in the bag system is going to keep all of our hops in there. So we don't have to worry about that. So this is what it looks like. Kind of coming up to a boil with the hops that I just tossed in. Yeah, I know it looks a little weird and everything. But once I get the brew bag kind of pushed down and not sticking on to the sides because of the boil it will look a lot better you can see it fogging up the camera So it's calmed down a little bit. The uh, it's actually gone down, reduced by a little bit. It should reduce anyways because it's a boil, and you're going to be doing an open air boil. So uh, yeah, like I said, it smells good in here. You can smell the hops. You can smell the malts. I've had a couple of drinks by here, so I'm kind of happy. I don't know about you guys, but brewing is a hobby of mine that really, really is a lot of fun. So here's our secondary hops. So whenever I am doing the brew, I just, you know, really get into it. See? Fugal. There goes our second hop addition for our last 10 minutes of the boil. Love the smell of hops. Now you don't really have to mix this as much. Um, I was probably pushing down the bag at this point or moving the bag around because pellet hops literally would just instantly fall apart once you put them into the boil. And that's because you want like a full saturation of those hops so they can release the most flavors and aroma that they possibly can. So here I am taking out the uh, bag, and that's got all of our hops in there. So instead of using like a hop spider, you can also see I'm wearing a glove this time, because it is hot. And now this one, because it's the hops, you really don't want to squeeze it, because hops have a lot of bitterness in it. And you can see it's gone down a level as well too. But yeah, like I was saying, uh, you don't want to squeeze it, because you'll be releasing unwanted bitters into the beer. So grains you can squeeze, hops you don't want to squeeze. So 
So you can see I've got my warp chiller hooked up here because we're done with our boil. Full one hour boil is all down. That's the warp chiller. So I've already switched off my T500. So here I am submerging the work coil into the brew. Now, chilling down your uh, your wart definitely does take a little while. I actually had my digital thermometer break. So um, I was actually, I couldn't get this thing to chill down super fast. It took probably about 20 minutes. I ended up having to go through and um, use a, uh, a regular thermometer to actually get the temperature because my thermometer died at like 120 something. You can see I'm sanitizing the digital thermometer. I don't know if water just got in there or something like that, but it just took a shit and died, so. Yeah, you can see it's 189 right now, but got that work chiller in there going on full blast with the cold water. So you can see the hot water coming out and you can see how that thermal change goes through and pushes all that hot water out and cools everything down. See, this is when I was starting to have troubles with it not cooling down and I didn't really know what was going on but figures out it was just my thermometer. It actually wasn't the, uh, the brew. So moving it up and down does help but you don't want to get any, you know, oxygen shoved into it. So you don't want to shake it vigorously or whip any extra oxygen into it because you could oxidize your beer doing that. So you can see I finally got it down to about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Like I said, I had to go get a uh, another regular thermometer to test it out, but it was right at 70.2 degrees. Now you're going to want to lift it up and put it on the counter or put it at a higher elevation so you can use your racking cane and get it into the carboy. Oh yeah, definitely don't forget about your brew towel. Sometimes you make messes and just get your towel and get ready to go. So I've already got my sanitized carboy, got my uh, sanitizer and my airlock as well too. There's my sanitized racking cane with the tube hooked up to it. All you got to do is give it a good pump and then there you go it will fill itself up so we're taking our gravity reading with our hydrometer and our graduating cylinder it's at 1.147 I know you can't really see it but it helps to give it a little spin so you can see what your accurate gravity will be so here's our SO4 and our carboy filled up and we're just going to pitch the yeast right in dry and we'll put our airlock on So 
So you don't want to shake it or mix it. Just let your yeast do what they normally do. So, yeah, the uh, fermentation took off like crazy. I know these last couple of videos go really fast. So I'm just going to keep talking while you see me racking it later on. But, yeah, it literally went so high up that it literally went to the airlock and that's that's fine it's not going to damage the beer or anything like that I actually also had a little bit left over but if you do get like what do you call it uh, a thing where um, the yeast or the, the fermentation is coming off the airlock the best thing you can do is just clean it you can actually see me putting away the clean airlock now uh, just get a new airlock fill it up with Starzan get it all get the top part all nice and cleaned up and then just put a new airlock on there i actually wrapped the towel around around mine because it was such an active fermentation um so you don't have to rack your beer off again to a new thing like this i mean i kind of did the gravity ended up ending at like 1.010 and you saw that little bit that i had left over And, uh, sorry, uh, you just saw that little bit that I had left over. I originally was going to, uh, take that yeast slurry right there and mix it into it. But ended up, that ended up going bad, so. You can see where the, the fermentation was real crazy, and we'll come back with the rest. So, that's basically it. I know the editing wasn't great, and you can probably hear me breathing in the background and stuff like that, but bear with me as I, uh, learn how to do all this shit. I've just kind of been going... You know, and learning how to do it myself, uh, just using my regular old microphone. But like, I like I was saying, those last couple of videos went really fast. Uh, what do you call it? The active fermentation was just like it was. It was crazy. This thing was bubbling out of the top and everything. And so I ended up having to wrap a towel around it, like I was saying over the audio. But uh, what do you call it? Like next time you can use maybe a six gallon carboy. I actually have one of those, which is probably what I should have used. Uh, another thing I didn't mention was that little line actually on the T500 was a six gallon mark, which is why I had that little bit left over. And my original plan was to reuse that yeast slurry at the bottom that I, that I showed when I was racking it off to the other clean carboy and pitch that into that little half gallon guy and, uh, you know, just ferment the rest of that. But it figures out like it only sat for maybe two days and it started to remold. And I had it capped off and everything. But that's, that's the thing about beer. You you got to use it or any any kind of exposed air will make it grow mold like like that. And so, but either way, um, we'll be back with the uh, the next video. What we'll be doing is that we'll be called, we'll be doing something called bottling condition, bottle, uh, bottle conditioning. And so what we'll do is that we'll basically uh, clean and sanitize a bunch of bottles we'll probably have probably about 50 beer bottles yeah when you brew beer like this you're getting a lot of beer so and it's really cool and fun to drink your own product at the end but uh like i was saying we're gonna clean sanitize all of our bottles i'll bring out the racking can again and we'll put what's called a bottle wand on there and that will actually just let us pour the beer right in there and we're going to be using carbonation drops um uh, English brown ale is usually low carbonated so uh, I talked to the guys in, the, in the, the brewing forum that I have for my brewing club and you know usually you can mix like something like like one fourth of a cup of sugar and then you just kind of like melt that down with some hot water and then dump that in you don't want to get it hot you want to cool it down first obviously because you're killed the yeast but you can just dump that in there and then you know and then rack off into the bottles cap them let them sit for two weeks and then they carbonate themselves through fermentation but like i said we'll explain all of that in the next video but either way i'm glad we were able to uh finally get a beer video and there'll be more in the future definitely when i get into more of the all grain stuff and get my own grinder and all that stuff but yeah step by step kind of stuff just like this and remember just to have fun because that's what this hobby is about is having fun and you know kicking back and drinking your own beer